Hi folks, welcome to Gear and Tackle Travels. I'm your host, Aaron. Today on this weekly modification build, we're gonna be doing a storage wall. So this is the wall we'll be working with. Uh, we're gonna start by carpeting the wall, incorporating some uh, gear ties. Gear ties are going to kind of hold whatever's in place. And this wall is gonna be a, a gear wall for items that I constantly use and my go-to items for my camping trips axe, knife, so on and so forth, etc. We'll get more involved with that when it comes to the end of the video. And the reason being for the gear wall. Who doesn't want to have a gear wall? Anyway, let's start by carpeting the wall. So now that my carpet's up on the wall, I get to take a step back and visualize it. And it's coming together pretty nicely. All that's left to do is cut out the heat track system and finish the rest of the wall with the remainder piece. And then the carpet's finished. Well, we got a nice thunder shower rolling in on us. Hopefully it rains for a few days. Alberta definitely needs it. Free up some space. Let's get this bed out of the way. So I've taken my carpet off the wall, laid it on the ground, placed my items where I wanted them to go, drilled holes through the back side of the carpet through the rubber coating, and placed the gear ties through where I wanted them to go. All that's left to do now is install and talk about some of the items and why I have them in my trailer. Well, there you have it folks, the gear wall is complete. Overall, I'm really happy with the finished product and I'm roughly into it about 40 bucks. $15 for the carpet and various gear ties from different stores. I went to three different stores, Home Depot being the cheapest with the biggest selection of all different sizes and colors. Well, let's talk about each product and why I have them on the wall. First off, let's start with the Kanji T-Hawk from Cricut. Excellent little hatchet for just getting those fires started. Moving on to a just a small dollar store shovel for bathroom purposes. Uh, some boat rope along with a carabiner. A stream light flashlight. I carry that on my person at all times. I, so the only reason why I put that on the wall is to take it out of my pocket at night and just install it in there. I don't use the sheath. Uh, the Pelican flashlight, just for various things around the campground. Illuminating underneath the trailer, whatever, see if you forgot something. Moving on to my pocket knife. Uh, the Hutu pocket knife. Go ahead and give those guys a follow on Instagram. Good company. I like what they're about. So far, the knife's working fantastic for me. Some standard everyday scissors from the dollar store. A Leatherman Wave which is on my person at all times, as I just added a carabiner clip uh, along with a zip tie, I didn't use a gear tie. A ferro rod, a first aid kit that everybody should have in their trailer or in their truck or vehicle, but always have your first aid kit. This is the, the Adventure Medical Kit, first 
2.0 first aid kit, medical supplies and survival tools. Um, I've doctored that a little bit more. I wanted some more things after bite and some other stuff that I added to that pack. Uh, my bush rod, a telescopic Zebco, is something that I could just flick out and go see if there's anything in the pond or lake that I'm, that I'm at. And the pry bar from Eskimo. It's basically just used for breaking out those holes in the morning if they tend to freeze over. Well, folks, that about wraps it up for me. Thanks for stopping by Gear and Tackle Travels on Instagram and Aaron on Facebook. Feel free to share the video, and we'll see you next week for your weekly cargo trailer modifications. Much appreciate your support. See you next week. Thank you.